Start by creating a new sketch and choosing millimeters as units. Again, we're going to sketch the floor shape of our building. You can type in the dimensions manually to get it um, accurate. I've chosen 12 meters by 52 meters or 12,000 millimeters by 52,000 millimeters. Um, you'll see the numbers appear in the measurements box in the bottom right hand corner. And you can delete the lines that you no longer want. So you've just got the outside shape. And then we're going to extrude that up. Um, again, you can type the thickness in. I've chosen 100 millimeters. Then we're going to use the offset tool to create the thickness of our walls. 300 millimeters is a good thickness for an external wall. Um, I've used a different thickness around the front of the building because I want a glazed front of my building so I'm choosing 10 mil thick for that glazing. I'm going to show where the wall ends and where the glazing starts so I'm going to put some lines across and then I'm going to delete the lines that I don't want to keep. Then I can extrude my walls. I'm going about 4 meters high. Getting nice and close so I can see the edge of the glazing so I know where to extrude and then type in the dimensions 4000 for 4 meters. I can then add materials to using the fill tool. I can then add materials to my shapes. Remember you have to add materials to both sides so all surfaces of an object not just the one side of an object so turn it around and look from all angles make sure you've got all the different surfaces you can see the glazing there is now nice and transparent now I'm going to start drawing out our internal walls uh, 150 mil is a good thickness for an internal wall. We can use the offset button to extrude some thick wall thicknesses, and then we can edit those shapes afterwards. So, for example, I can get that edge there closer. I can do that and click on Move. We can move that against the wall, so we've got it coming out of the existing wall. Delete any extra bits. And once we've deleted these, we can extrude the internal walls up to whatever height you want. Um, I'm going to make mine 4 meters, which is the same height as the external walls. You can then add in voids for doors or windows by drawing on the surface and extruding those through the same thickness um, as your wall. So we can push that void in. The wall is 150 thick, so make sure you extrude the same thickness. You can delete any extra lines like that one. We could then add in a door separately if we want. We can put a window in the external wall. Extrude it all the way through. And then I can add the glazing in in the same way. So nice and close. I'm just going to go for 5mm thick glazing. So I'm going to draw a little line 5 mil there, and then I'm going to zoom in close. You can just about see that's a double line. And then we can extrude that one up all the way to the top. There we go. To create the glazing, and then we can apply the glazing material. Remember, do that to both sides of the object otherwise it won't become transparent and then we have our main frame of our building
So SketchUp has a fantastic library of components. So if you click on the component button, we can search for lots of pre-drawn components that people have uploaded and shared, and we can just download those and input those into our own model. So it says on face, which means it's sitting on the face of that shape there, which is what I want. I can then just copy and paste that as many times as I wish. So I can have an outdoor seating area here, for example. I'm doing it visually using the right click on the mouse, but obviously you can just put Control C and Control V to copy and paste. And once you've got a row that you want, which are all nice and lined up, you can then select both of them. If you hold the shift button down and then click on them both individually, it will select both of them. If you don't hold the shift button down, it will just select one at a time. And then we can paste those two at a time. Or I can select all four. I could have pasted all four of those together. Get them a bit closer together, and then I can put a fourth one. If I now highlight all of those, so I'm holding on the shift button, click on all of them, I can copy, and then I can paste another eight benches all in one go over this side as well. As I said, you'll be I'm always quite impressed with the types of things that people have saved into the 3D warehouse library. There are all sorts of great models you can just add in 